Welcome back. So, in our last episode, we have improved our game engine a little bit, so you can actually have the player moving from our town map into this field that we're preparing for upcoming epic battle scenes. Move the player a little bit because I was just getting tired of like every test run, walking the player all the way around up into the next map. That was getting very old. So put the player right there, walk straight up into it. There was a bit of a problem because we had to plug in some magic numbers. Let's see if I can show those to you again. The upper Y position of a map is 1,696. Like when you hit that number and go up, you move to the next map. And when you return to the map, you need to return to that Y position. And again, when you're going, like when you go from the town into the field, you need to pop into negative 288. Those are very strange numbers, and it's, I don't know, it's kind of bothering me that they exist at all. So we need to, we need to figure out what's going on there. Ideally, the numbers that I want to use are the numbers in our world definition. This is what the tiled editor generated. The town is at x is 0 and y is 0, and the field is at y equals negative 512. So y is going negative as it goes up, opposite of the mini micro, but we can adjust for that. But it's at 512. It is not at 1,688. What's that? 1,696. And we need to figure out that mapping there. So a little bit of math. Oh, let's do the math in, a, in here. So 1,696, was that our magic number? We have a render scale of four. We have, let's load in some constants. Tile level size is 32. The tile size is 16. Tile size in pixels. Tile level size in pixels. So what I'm wondering Let's look at our tile level size. That's 2048, bigger than this 1696. But we also have the negative 288 down here. All right, so 1696 plus 288 is not quite the same as 2048. What's the difference? 2048 minus 1984? That's 64, which is the size of... Hold on. Well, that's the size of one tile. So what I'm wondering is if the render offset of the map in our map library, the tiled library, is wrong. Let's take a look at this. Tiled layer, render. Somewhere in here, yeah, setting the cells. I had to fix a bug here once before. Renders this tiled layer to the given display layer. It says it's a slow call. I wonder if it's slow because of this block here. My experiment was removing that. Let's 
So we're look what we're looking for is something that would cause the offset to be not quite right. 1696 divided by 64. Just a weird number of pixels. N weird number of tiles. By half a tile. We're looking at the height, 640. 640 by 64 is 10 tiles. Which means that the way the display is currently set up, we can uh, we can see 10 tiles of height at one time. All right, digging through our library. Dig, dig, dig. Offset by 288. Just four and a half tiles. That's what we were looking at yesterday. Here, let me oh, our debug statement back in there. The player's current position. And we'll see the problem. So you can see at the bottom, it's a little a little bit hard to read. Let's change that text color. What is the... Yeah. Color with a capital C. And make it black. But uh, kind of translucent. Good. Oh, on you color dot white. White is unknown. But is it really color dot white? Yeah, that is a thing. No, let's do it this way. Probably overwrote the value somewhere. White is unknown in this context on update line 2. Did I not save it? Reset. Clear. Rerun. There we go. Sometimes resetting fixes everything. The top, the the Y pixel coordinate of the uppermost tile, one thousand six hundred ninety six, and then the Y coordinate of the lowest tile is negative two eighty eight. And measuring from the bottom, I really want that negative two eighty eight to be a zero. We need to figure out why it's not a zero. Getting those numbers to line up will allow us to easily just take these numbers out of the world map definition and just plug it in. If we don't do it now, we're going to have these weird offsets plaguing us for the entire life of this project. Which just will not do. I'm wondering about this. Um, there's a place where it was inverting coordinates. I remember seeing this like a while back. 
correct the Y order of tiles by default tiled renders tiles from the top left as 0, 0. Since we need micro renders with 0, 0 being the bottom left, we need to invert the tile rows. But how is it doing that inversion? It's doing a lot of stuff here. We want it doing that. Is that the right way to do it? I want to make a mess. I'm going to disable that. And just do this and see how it affects our map. It's, it's going to get ugly. So what I am seeing is, well, everything is flipped, which is about what we expected. We're no longer inverting the y-coordinate, so everything is upside down from where it was. Okay. Height. What is the height? Is that in tiles or pixels? That's the real question. I think it's in tiles. So basically, map properties, tile width, tile height. Map are 32 and 32. What is making these numbers go negative? The self mod width and or the, the I mod width and the I divided by width are a way to convert a single number into, like if you're counting tiles left to right, top to bottom, that will help you figure out what row and column those are on based off of how wide the area is. That's a standard thing when you're working with tile sets. Typically it's like the tile column I mod width, tile row, I divided by width. So what's doing is decomposing that I value into this row and column and then recomposing it based off of what road should actually be on. And it's off by four and a half tiles, which is just weird. Why would it be off by four and a half tiles? Four and a half tiles, 288 pixels. There's always a good reason. I'm just scanning through some of these other library files to see if there's a reasonable explanation.
I mean, one explanation would be is if it's inverting based off of the height of the display instead of the height of the map, which could lead to some weird problems. Wait a second. That brings to mind four and a half tiles. It might be our fault because we are of how we're centering our character on the screen, actually. Here, let's see if I can. Find that right quick. I'll display center X. Here, we need those constants. What is the value of tile display center Y? 320. But then we also have tile size in pixels. What if we just subtract tile size in pixels? 56. But what if we just, what if we're actually subtracting half of a pixel, half of a tile? And there is the mysterious 288. So that's interesting. Our problem is being caused by how we're calculating the center of the screen. So that's fun. So it's not the fault of the library, it's the fault of something, a side effect of how we're calculating positions. I'm just going to decide what to do about it. I'm not entirely sure. What numbers? Let's see. We're getting the sprites X and Y position. So, tile X. Let's talk about the tile position also. I'm going to go for a walk. Open. Doesn't need to be black here. is stubbornly insisting on filling the entire background with that color. Oh, now this was going to make me mad. Okay. Okay, so... It's getting the correct tile position right there. There's some junk. Just look at what's inside the parentheses. We're currently at tile y equals zero. That sprite position is not the tile y equals zero. I think what we need to do 
is key off of the tile position instead of the sprite's pixel position. What that would look like... Oh, we're already doing that. Tile y equals zero. Thinking. Well, I have an idea of how I want to solve this for now. So we we have our sixteen ninety six. Our constants file. Pixels. Minus the center. Oh, how did I do this? It's four and a half tiles. I'm just going to be swapping back and forth a little bit while I figure out this math. So 2048 minus 1696 is 352, 352 divided by 64, that's five and a half. The tile display. Center, well, center Y, actually. It's 320. Okay, so the 1696 is equal to file level size and pixels. Tile display center Y minus tile size pixels divided by two. That's that's the equation we need. All right, so that still not as tidy as I would like, but um, at least takes away the magic number. Let's do the same thing for that negative 288, which I believe that.
Don't like that. I had to flip that sign there. We're going to take it anyway. No, that's true. Because if you undid the parentheses, the minus, this would cancel out that minus and be a plus. So you can minus the center y plus tile size pixels divided by two. And then up here, a bit more algebra. Either because if you, if you stuck that in parentheses, then this minus would then become a plus. You can just Kicking the problem down the road. But you know, we have parameterized it. That's something at least. All right, let's test. Wrong. In it. Okay, we're still tracking our coordinates there on the left. It's going up. Good. Okay, and um, collision still works. Our NPC is still there. We're having trouble last time with the NPCs just not coming back after we leave the screen, but they are still there. So that's good. All right, so the coordinates are working. And I don't really like that we're having to do all that finagling, but it at least may it makes sense. We know where the magic numbers are coming from. So we're gonna keep working on getting this transition cleaned up. Ultimately, what I'd like to be able to do is come back to the tile editor and just plop down more fields all around our village. Like, have a whole 3x3 three three grid of area where you can explore. That would just be cool. I don't want to have to go back into our source code and manually code in each bit. So we're going to have to get it respecting the world file. So I think what we're going to do we're going to need to do a couple things. One of them is I want to clean up the transitions a bit more. That'll be the first thing. I want to get it so that you don't see that blue, the blue void at the end of the map. So we're going to have to work on our camera a little bit. Try to speed up the transition a little bit if we can, or loading the map. We're going to have some sort of indicator that when you're loading, when you enter the new map, that what the name of the map here. I think. Still going back and forth on that. And then once that's done, we'll start working on interpreting that world file so that we can use the data in there. And I think I'm going to stop it there. So, hope to see y'all next time. Later.